Hey guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. I I watch this YouTuber right now. Um, True Underdog Gaming on YouTube. He made a video about Fate. Uh, Infinite Retro. Okay. Uh, Fate. And um, we're gonna watch this live together. I just wanna say something Girl, so i'm giving you all the mortal kombat 1 dlc for free i'm just kidding Sad. i'm just gonna talk about um how i feel like honestly it's kind of like funny and kind of not because i'm like because that um <laughs> Uh, let's watch the video. Guys. I don't have that kind of power. However, I will be condemning one individual to the naughty list. Let's call him Feet, which I believe stands for Fight Every Enemy Tenaciously. And Feet is a very naughty boy indeed, going after any YouTuber who speaks favorably about Mortal Kombat 1. For you see, he considers them shills, especially. Hold on. <laughs> He's talking about my friend. Um, uh,. Infinite Retro here in the chat. I wanna, I wanna say something in the chat. I recently, and recently we had um on the podcast recently, and Dynasty Dynasty talked about True Underdog and History Behind the Warrior pretty much on the podcast episode like a couple of days ago a couple of weeks ago now like a couple of days ago in the chat i was in there so like honestly i i remember the podcast they made together the true underdog history behind the oh yeah and true dynasty dynasty as well i remember that podcast Sometimes I used to watch if the developers treat them favorably. In his mind, this gives feet free reign to belittle them and mo Yeah, um honestly, like Infinite Retro is an awesome dude. Guys in the chat. I'm not gonna talk bad all about him. I'm not gonna talk really bad all about you underdog either. So like I can't believe he made this them on his streams however he sees fit. From baseless allegations to straight up misinformation about the games as well, just so he can complain about it, nobody is safe. And that's because Steve is a diehard fan of the series himself, posting Mortal chat. Kombat 1 videos almost every day, which is something I do as well. And despite my many open criticisms of Mortal Kombat 1, Feet decided to make a video on me anyway. So in the spirit of Christmas, I wanted to help Feet see the light and aid him in reflecting on the error of his ways. And to prove this video is not mean spirited. I wanted to extend an olive branch. I too. What do you mean by that? It's kind of mean spirited, bro, in the chat. This is me doing a reaction video right now. This is kind of mean spirited video, and you're gonna be sarcastic about it believe that release check should be off by default in Mortal Kombat 1. Mainly because most players turn it off anyway. In fact, if any of you watching have not turned off release check, go ahead and pause the video, go in Mortal Kombat 1, and change your controller settings. In my honest opinion, this setting should also belong on the naughty list. Turn it off first chance you get. It was intended to help beginners out, but for the most part, it just gets in the way. I'm gonna say true underdogs thumbnails are pretty much boring. I'm gonna be a completely honest with you guys in the chat right now. I'm gonna be completely honest. His thumbnails, before he used to do ca character guides on fighting games a lot, like for different, he's just covering Mortal Kombat for the thumbnails. He's got some weird ass thumbnails in the chat, pretty much. And honestly, he does. He's going to talk about... Uh, uh. And often gives you the wrong input. Now, funny enough, Feet himself did not know what release check was. He did not know it was a setting in the game that you could turn off. Instead, he just complained about getting the wrong inputs, which is definitely... Uh, 
Fate is an awesome dude. I, right. he's an awesome dude, dude. In the chat, I, right. I want to see True Underdog and Infinite Retro in the podcast together, like have a decent discussion all about it in the chat. I'm like, I want to see that on Fate channel or on much channel. I want to bring it on much channel. I just want to see how they do a, like a react together in the chat. I want to see that on Fate's uh, podcast. I want to see both of them in a podcast together. And honestly, I want to see that. Let's continue. A skill issue, but also I do agree that this setting should be off by default because most players want it off anyway. So despite his ignorance, Feet was ironically correct about release check. As they say, even a broke clock is right twice a day. As mentioned earlier, Feet loves to roast Mortal Kombat YouTubers. He even made a dedicated video about me. And I honestly do oh. love the thumbnail. It got a good laugh out. I love that thumbnail too. That's kind of hilarious. By fate, I love that from the keep it up, retro. Keep it up, dude. In the chat, keep it up. In the chat, man, keep it up. I love you. And for that, retro, I love you, bro. Keep up the good work. According to Feet, I'm a Netherrealm shill because I said that Mortal Kombat 1 is a better fighting game than Street Fighter 6. Apparently, the only way anybody could hold an opinion like that, you said Mortal Kombat need to win game of the year because of it had more characters than Street Fighter 6 and something like the gameplay is much better and that that's that was your opinion in your other video in the chat as well I watched that video bro I watched that video dude in the chat I watched that video in the chat, yo. Street Fighter 6 deserved to win Game of the Year. And honestly, it. I'm happy Street Fighter 6 won. As if they are paid off by Netherrealm. But here's the thing, Feet. I'm actually partnered with pretty much every major fighting game developer. There's a reason I have this statue months before anybody else. And there's a reason why Namco Bandai flew me out to play Tekken 8 months early and then make videos about their product. And in fact, did you know I'm also a Capcom partner as well? That's right. Pretty much every major fighting game developer you can think of has given me some special treatment. Or in other words, if you think I speak favorably about Mortal Kombat, Bad one. Lucky you. Lucky you. Well, lucky you. In the chat. Lucky you. We can't get review copies like the smaller YouTubers in the chat. Lucky you. All right, we can't get any access like you can. Lucky you, true underdog. Lucky you. Lucky you because Netherrealm gives me special treatment, well, you're wrong. Because they all give me special treatment because I love fighting games and my channel gets tons of views about fighting games. When Tekken 8 comes out in January, I'm likely going to make a ton of videos about it. I, 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 I guarantee you the Tekken 8 guy does not gonna last that long. He's gonna go back to Mortal Kombat. He's gonna go back to Mortal Kombat. Definitely. And he's... <laughs> He's definitely gonna go back to Mortal Kombat. He hardly touched Street Fighter 6 on the channel. And he only done jewelry. And honestly, you're, you're supposed to cover all fighting games. I guarantee you he's gonna drop Tekken 8 in a couple months when the game comes out. Go back to MK. Let's continue. And if I'm having a good time, that's just because I really do enjoy the game. I'm not being paid to talk nicely about it. I simply love fighting games, and I've been making videos about them for over a decade now on this channel. So if you disagree with my opinion that Mortal Kombat 1 is a better fighting game than Street Fighter 6, that's completely okay. But there's no need to hurl out baseless insults. You can't say somebody is shilling a fighting game when they get special treatment from every major fighting game developer. I love all of these developers equally, but Mortal Kombat 1 just gives me the most satisfaction. Street Fighters.
Lucky you again. Lucky you. You get special team. What about the smaller YouTubers? We don't get special team treatments in the chat. We don't in the chat, bro. Like, you supposed to expire us as a YouTuber. You supposed to help us. Bro, you're supposed to... You're supposed to help us as a player, bro. As a community channel. Six is a fantastic game too, but there's just not enough content to keep me coming back. I learned all the characters, finished the one offline mode, and then moved on. There simply isn't enough content to keep me coming back. And that's why I think that Mortal Kombat 1 is simply better. It's got more characters, there's more game modes, there's stuff to unlock for playing online and offline modes. And when I do inevitably get bored of playing the characters, I can mix the cameos around, and it's like the honeymoon phase all over again. And to make things even better, every month we get a new DLC character, we get more... I'm gonna add something here. I'm gonna add something. Each fighting game has a meta and a honeymoon period. And they might drop off fighting games. No questions about that in the chat. Each fighting game has a honeymoon period in the chat. Continue. Palettes for the characters and even new costumes completely for free. Although both games charge way too much for certain DLC costumes, but at least for Mortal Kombat 1, every month you also get new costumes and palettes for free, and I just find that really amazing. But one final time, I will say that both Street Fighter 6 and Mortal Kombat 1 are fantastic games, and it's okay to favor one more than the other on a personal level. But enough about me, let's go back to feet. As mentioned earlier, this man will make baseless accusations about people simply because they speak favorably about a game that he personally dislikes a great example he's a awesome dude by the way yeah infinite retro uh, fate uh, or uh, i'll fight my own my rivals he's a awesome dude by the way and he's the i watched him in the early beginning in 2006 bruh is ketchup and mustard and i wanted to mention this part early on in the video because i just can't stand the thought process here according to feet these two individuals were actively hiding the fact that mortal kombat 1 did not have crossplay, and he makes this assumption because ketchup and mustard had five days or so to beta test the game and that's it. That's all the evidence he has. Nowhere on the record is there proof that they were testing online features or were told about the online- He talked to Tom Brady as well. Uh, as well, Faye talk to Tom, Tom Brady, MK Tom Brady in the chat as well. Um, a couple weeks ago, so you're late on that news features nothing like that they were simply at the studio playing the game early and therefore the fact that these two creators said nothing about the game lacking crossplay means they are guilty until proven innocent and i hate that method of thinking you can't make a claim about somebody and then say they're guilty until they prove otherwise you either have exact evidence or you don't unless feet can prove beyond a shadow of a doubt that these two were actively hiding something from the audience on behalf of netherrealm then they did not do it and honestly the craziest part is going out after ketchup and mustard at all because these two are some of the nicest and most genuine people you will ever interact with but guess what they like mortal kombat 1 and speak positively about it and therefore they're the enemy according to feet which again is just ridiculous and i don't even think it's a character like six Arakin. i feel like feet actually does feel this way he calls me a mortal kombat chill because netherrealm flies me places but guess what so does capcom and namco bandai he claims that ketchup and mustard intentionally hid lacking features in the game from the public because netherrealm told them to without any direct evidence whatsoever and if all that wasn't bad enough he's not even good enough at the games to actually criticize them and even when he tries to do data and research to back up his points he fails hilariously for example feet recently made a video about up block a new defense mechanic in mortal kombat 1 and he claimed it was i think up block is a useless mechanic by the way so it's a useless mechanic. I thought, like, comes in hand handy sometimes with the crutch. 
with that book mechanic. I'm gonna be completely, uh, it does come in handy sometimes, not all the time, but it's still a useless mechanic. Earth spreadsheet. I'm sorry, I still find this funny. He made a spreadsheet. Um, let me. Actively hiding something from the audience on behalf of Netherrealm, then they did not do it. And honestly, the craziest part is going after ketchup and mustard at all, because these two are some of the nicest and most genuine people you will ever interact with. But guess what? They like Mortal Kombat 1 and speak positively about it, and therefore they're the enemy, according to Feet, which again is just ridiculous. And I don't even think it's a character like Six Arakin. I feel like Feet actually does feel this way. He calls me a Mortal Kombat chill because Netherrealm flies me places, but guess what? So does Capcom and Namco Bandai. He claims that Ketchup and Mustard intentionally hid lacking features in the game from the public because Netherrealm told them to without any direct evidence whatsoever. And if all that wasn't bad enough, he's not even good enough at the games to actually criticize them. And even when he tries to do data and research to back up his points, he fails hilariously. For example, Feet recently made a video about Upblock, a new defense. Um, I'm gonna talk about Upblock. Yeah, in the chat. Um, it does come in handy, but not all the time. I think it's still a useless mechanic, a block. Uh, make sure you um go to the uh, Omni Pros, the Omni Pros, Omni, <laughs> the Fates Omni Pros, the um, Omni Pros in the chat mechanic in Mortal Kombat 1, and he claimed it was useless. He tried his best to document why by making a boomer spreadsheet. I'm sorry, I still find this funny. He made a spreadsheet in, like, Microsoft Paint. And to make things funnier, this spreadsheet had a ton of mistakes. It was just straight up wrong. Like, look at Katana. He says Katana has zero overheads. So, unfortunately, it looks like Feet can't even take notes properly. But listen, even I myself admit that up block is not a crazy useful attack all the time, but even so, Foxy Grandpa did a fantastic job explaining the many ways it can be useful at all levels of play, from casual player to pro player. And now finally, to end of this video, damage. let's talk I about damage. Because when Feet made this next statement, I... nearly fell out of my chair, and I wish I was exaggerated, but I was so dumbfounded. I could not believe he made this claim. You see, Feet is upset about the high levels of damage in Mortal Kombat 1. You make two mistakes and your character is dead. Which can be true in some cases, but most of the time it takes three combos to kill the opponent, which is no different than Mortal Kombat 11, Mortal Kombat X, or MK9, where the damage was the craziest. That game had touch of death combos, and even- I'm gonna add one more thing. Each fighting game does have a meta. Everyone wants to copy the pros and the combos, the same combos. And for the meta, like, each fighting game does have a meta thing. So that's what I'm going to add here. The weaker character could still get 40% meterless. It was wild. If you want that kind of damage in Mortal Kombat 1, for most characters, it requires one bar and at least one cameo summon. Otherwise, you're never cracking 40%. So once again, when Feet complains about Mortal Kombat 1's damage being too high, he's very misinformed. But here comes the funniest part. For one of his counter examples brought up in the debate between him and Foxy Grandpa, Feet mentioned Tekken 7. Oh, 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 oh my gosh, I nearly <laughs> fell out of my chair. I'm not a great Tekken player, but I am a good Tekken player. And I can tell you right now, from first-hand experience, any regular punish in that game is doing at least 40% damage. And that's if you... Tekken is my game. I'm gonna say, it's not all about the combos all the, all the time. In te Maybe in Tekken 8, it's all about the combos, but... With Tekken, everyone thinks about the combos, mostly. They don't really care about movement in Tekken. Like, they want to hit the fancy combo. It's the meta again. It's pretty much like the meta for fighting games. 
each fighting game that has a meta of fighting. Like, honestly, definitely, I have to get, I think slightly, slightly agree with you, Underdog, but not all of it. Tekken's not all about doing fancy combos. You have to move around. If, uh, they made Tekken 8 a lot more aggressive. So Tekken 8 has to be aggressive. So um, I really like that change as well. Um, yeah. Don't have the wall nearby. In that situation, you'll get even more damage and a guaranteed mix up as the opponent's getting up, some of which are almost impossible to avoid. And keep in mind, the Tekken does not have meter except for like two characters, all right? Which means when you get hit, all this damage is guaranteed. You're a Tekken doesn't have meter. <laughs> You're saying Tekken doesn't have meter. What about the 2D characters? Like Geese and Akuma and Eliza from T Tekken 7. They had meters. The 2D characters had meters in the game. In the game. Bro, in the game. In the game, bro. Opponent does not need any resources, and if they're low on health, they enter rage mode, which means these combos do even more damage just for free. So if you make one mistake in Tekken, and your opponent has rage, and the wall is nearby, Santa Claus help you, because you're gonna lose a good 70% of your health, if not more. In fact, some characters in Tekken have touch of death combos. So the sheer fact that Feet brought up Tekken 7 as an example of fair damage almost had me falling out of my chair. That game is by far the most- <laughs> No, 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 no. I mean, unless we're talking anime fighters like yeah. Dragon Ball Fighters or Marvel oh 3, my but then God. again, those games require meter that has to be built up over time. And Tekken 7 doesn't have that limitation. Oh, and then he brought up Street Fighter 6, which was equally hilarious because not only can any character in that game also get 40% for a single punish, but get this, you start off with full meter. That's, in Street Fighter 6, true. which means at the very start of the that's first true. round, if the opponent makes a mistake, you can easily punish them for way more than 40%. And then in round 3, if you saved up that level 3 critical art, every character in the game gets over 60% damage, and some have a near touch of death combo. So once again, wow. it's simply wrong. When it comes to damage, wow. enough, Mortal Kombat 1 might be one of the most fair fighting games in the modern day. I mean, for Pete's sake, even Mortal Kombat 2 had infinite combo. Combos, touch of death combos, if you will, and Mortal Kombat 1 had glitches and exploits that also killed the opponent in a wow. single combo. Uh, and don't even get me started on Mortal Kombat 3. Yeah, there was finally a stamina meter wow. for the run, but it didn't matter. The characters still got touch of death combos. So if you're gonna try to claim that Mortal Kombat games have gotten worse because the damage has gotten more unfair, you're simply incorrect. Like, as incorrect as somebody can be. Please, Feet, learn to make a spreadsheet. Use Microsoft Excel and not Microsoft Paint please learn to take notes properly i really do appreciate that you're trying to back up your points with evidence but you got to be better at actually finding the evidence and obviously you're free to make videos on whoever you want to but please stop with the baseless accusations if you don't have any evidence then it's simply not true nobody is guilty until proven innocent and if you think otherwise then well you're the problem unfortunately i do have to put you on the naughty list this year but there's no reason you can't do better in the future and hopefully by next christmas you're on the nice list. Thank He's not gonna give a shit. He's not gonna give a shit, dude. He's not gonna give a shit. If he's in the naughty little list on nice list. Wow. He's not gonna give a shit, dude. Trust me. Uh, I wanna add something in this uh, conversation. We had Dynasty in the podcast. And... You and history behind the warrior turned against Dynasty. Uh, as he told us in the chat, he told us something. I'm not gonna mention watch the podcast in the chat. Really watch the podcast in the chat, man. And um, honestly, fate. Fate is not gonna care about this. Anyway, he's, he's in the naughty list. He's not gonna give it, give it a shit.
you know, he's not gonna give a shit all about being in, in the naughty list. I don't. This <laughs> this video. Is kind You're watching every. Buddy, and I hope you enjoyed. Yes, this video was a response, but it's by no means a mean-spirited video. Do not go after this person in the comment section. Don't be mean to them or make fun of them. We all make mistakes at the end of the day, and everybody has the potential to change. So one last time, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, uh, come back next time, and as always, stay underdogs. Wow, guys. All right, guys, I'm going to end the video right here. Please like, share, and subscribe, and fight on, guys. I'm really signing out. Peace out, and fight on.